Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 6.3, where we're going to talk about heat and stoichiometry, uh, a little bit about Plendo, you need to know endothermic and exothermic still, um, energy and bond formation breaking and percent yield, so let's hop to it. In combustion reaction, combustion reactions, the products are more than CO2 and H2O. Light and heat are also the products. See the little fire guy? Heat can be given a coefficient. So if I have three irons plus two aluminums, we used this equation before, yields three irons um, plus aluminum oxide plus 55 kilojoules. This way we have a coefficient for it. So for every three moles of iron oxide we use, we get 55 kilojoules. For every two moles of aluminum, we get 55 kilojoules of heat released. So much heat is released as 75 grams of aluminum react. This is pretty much the same as all the other ones that we did. So 75 grams of aluminum, put grams of aluminum on the bottom, always go through moles, and one mole of aluminum equals, go to the periodic table, 26.98 grams. Now when I have moles of aluminum, I can now convert that directly into heat. Now normally we say moles over moles, but we can convert moles into heat because two moles of aluminum equal 55 kilojoules. And that's it. I'm all done. So 75 divided by 26.98 times 55 divided by 2 is 76.44. kilojoules of heat. How many grams of iron, I talk funny, um, form if 125.5 kilojoules of heat are formed? Flip it around. 125.5 kilojoules of heat. Oops, I don't want to put the word heat there. I don't want to put the word heat there. Times dividing bar. Now, just like before, even though we're not going through moles for kilojoules, there's never moles of kilojoules. I'm going to put kilojoules on the bottom to cancel the units. Remember, this was grams of aluminum to cancel it, moles of aluminum to cancel it, and then kilojoules are what I have left for my final answer. So 125 kilojoules, I want grams of iron. So now I can't go right into grams of iron, so I have to go into moles of iron first because I know a relationship there. Three moles of iron and 55 kilojoules. And then I know that one mole of iron will be a certain number of grams of iron, and I get that by going to the periodic table to two decimal places. So 125.5 times 3 divided by 55 times 55.85 is 382.3 grams of iron. Easy peasy. So how much heat is required to use 58.6 grams of potassium chlorate? So again, I'm just going to kick this back into heat, and I want to point out heat can be on either side. And you do need to be able to figure out which one of these is potassium chlorate. Here's chloride. Oh, look, it's an element all by itself, so this must be chlorate. So 58.6 grams of KClO3 times dividing bar, grams KClO3 to cancel. Always go through moles of KClO3. I need an equivalency here. So one mole of KClO3 equals go to the periodic table. Ah. So potassium is 39.10 plus chlorine is 35.45 plus 48 for three oxygens, and I get 122.55. Now when I'm in moles of KClO3, I want to go into heat, how much heat is required. So I need a relationship between KClO3 and kilojoules. Well, two KClO3s will give me 195.3 kilojoules. So 58.6 divided by 122.55 times 195.3 divided by 2 is 46.7 kilojoules. Uh-oh. If 9.87 liters of O2 form, how much is required? That's a boo boo on my part. Oopsie, 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 oopsie. Sorry if you wrote that down. Please forgive. Percent yield equals part over total. Part is what you got in lab. Total is what stoic, that means math, says you should have. So let's take a look at that. Yeah. 
calculate the percent yield to 550 grams of C7H8 make 305 grams. Okay, so I'm going to label this 550 make 305 grams of P nitro toluene. Oh, don't do that. So if I want to find the percent yield, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this into this, and this is my stoic answer. Okay, this is what I should get. So let's go ahead and do that. 550 grams of C7, H8. Grams of C7H8, one mole C7H8, and I go moles. Oh no, I hope it's balanced. <gasps> I hope it is too. C7, C7, H89, H789. Um, o, uh, one N, one N, three O's, three O's. Whew, wow, I got lucky on that one. So carbon is 12.01 times 7. Plus 8.08 .08 gives me 92.15. Now my moles of C7H8. Again, I'm turning it into the other one that I have a mass for. So moles of C7. Oh, get back here. C7. Get back here. Get back here. H7. NO2. And moles over moles, where the co both the coefficients are 1. I just looked that one up. And then I found that one mole of C7H7NO2. And I forget how many grams of C7H7NO2. So 12.01 .01 is carbon times 7. Plus 7.07 .07 is 7 hydrogens. Plus 14.01 .01 is 1 nitrogen plus 32 is 2 oxygens, and I get 137.15. And then I check my math. 550 divided by 92.15 times 137.15, and I get 818.5. Whoa. Usually, your expected yield is much larger than what you really got. So this makes 305 grams of P-nitrotoluene product. So remember, percent is part over total times 100%. The part is what you got, right? So what we got was 818.5 divided by what we really got was 305. Wait a minute, that's not right. What we really got, the part that we got from lab, was 305. What we should have gotten was 818. Really, computer? You're going to do this to me now? Let's try it again. The part that we got in lab, let's write this again, percent equals part you got in lab over the total. The part we got in lab was 305. The total we have, darn it, I just lost it. Oh, it's still my calculator. Woohoo! 818 times 100%. Now, this is weird because usually 305 divided by 818.58 times 100% is. Oh, I just can't do math. Is 37. 0.7%. That's a pretty low percent yield. So, But that's what happens sometimes. So if it's worth doing it and that's the only yield you get, that's it. If 1.85, oh, wouldn't that weird? If 1.85 grams of aluminum reacts and 2.12 grams of copper uh, form, what is the percent yield? Hey, I thought this would erase it all. Okay. So what I'm going to do is take my aluminum and convert it into copper. So I'm going to take 1.85 and I'm going to turn it into my 2.12. Now it's probably going to be less. It doesn't have to be less, but it's probably going to be less. So 1.85 grams of aluminum times dividing bar. Grams of aluminum. Moles of aluminum. One mole is go to the periodic table. And then 
I have, oh no, look, so I have moles of aluminum. Oh, this isn't really happening right now, is it? Okay, I'll start all over again. 1.85 grams of aluminum, that's my given. Hmm, that's gone. I'll try that again. It'd be nice if whatever demons are cursing my computer would stop cursing my computer. Ah, ha, 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 ha. 1.85 grams of aluminum. And then 26.98 grams of aluminum equals one mole of aluminum. And then I know I want to get out of moles of aluminum and go into moles of copper. Okay? Now, my moles of copper, as moles over moles, I use coefficients. Well, I look at this and I'm like, ooh, man, my coefficients, my equation is not balanced. So let's see if I can balance this. I have three sulfates, and I have two aluminums. That gives me three coppers. And I think that'll balance it. Good. So my moles of copper would be three, and my aluminum, my missing aluminum now, would be two. Let's just pretend this will come back. Sometimes it shows up in the next slide. Oops, it did not. Nope, that's just gone. Hmm. Okay. I'm getting really good at this problem. 1.85 grams of aluminum times dividing bar. 26.98 grams of aluminum and one mole of aluminum. Um, oops, I had two moles of aluminum from the coefficients. And I had one mole, nope, I had three moles of copper from the coefficients. And then one mole of copper is, uh-oh, I don't have a periodic table. Oh, I have to ask Siri here. What is the molar mass of copper? Help me out, Siri. Let me check that. The answer is about 63.5 oh. grams per mole. I thought I knew it, and I did. So I'm going to take 1.85 divided by 26.98. Would you like to buy Girl mm -hmm. Scout cookies? Times 3 divided by 2 times 63.55. That actually wasn't a weird computer glitch. That was my daughter selling Girl Scout cookies. 6.54 grams of copper. And that's how much we should get. Hey! So 6.54 grams of copper is what we should get. I'm really sorry about this screen. This is really weird. I really got 2.12. So percent is part over total times 100%. The part that I got was 2.12 over my total, which is 6.54 times 100% which is 2.12 divided by answer, 32.4%. And that is my percent yield. So to review, percent is part of a total. Uh, the total is from Stoic Plendo. And treat heat like a reactant or product. Always go through moles and get your computer checked out because, my goodness, it is jumping around with stuff everywhere. Toodles.